thinking of buying a home in 2020? Well, today we're talking about the home buying process and everything you need to know. Hey, what's up everyone? Aaron Bowman here with the Bowman Realty Group over at eXp Realty. And thanks for coming by and checking out another video today. Now, if this is your first time here, or maybe you've checked out a few videos before, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell notification so you get notified when we release new content here on YouTube. Now, if you'd like to follow us on any other social media platforms, all the links are down below in the description, along with ways to get in contact with myself and my team. Now, like I said in the beginning, we're talking about the home buying process. Maybe you've been renting for a few years, or maybe you've sold a home in the past and you traveled and you're renting and you're now looking to buy again. Things change you know, throughout the years and we're gonna cover the top eight things you need to know when buying a home. Number one, find yourself a realtor you connect with and trust. There's nothing worse than finding the first realtor you meet, not talking to a couple of them and then realizing that your personalities just don't work and that they're really not listening to your needs. All right, number two is financing. Financing is very important because you need to know what type of loan product you're going to be using if you're not buying in cash. And the reason for that is if you're going FHA, for example, or VA, you wanna make sure that the house is in moving condition. And there's certain things you wanna look for, like no peeling paint, no cracked windows, that sort of thing. Because when you have your inspection for FHA or VA, those will be red flags and those things will have to be fixed before they will fund the loan for the property. Now, if you're not working with somebody that can help you get your loan or some type of mortgage broker, your realtor that you're working with should have a list of trusted providers that they've worked with in the past that they can refer you to. Number three, once you have your financing set up, this is the fun part. This is where you start searching for homes. Now, what you need to do is sit down with your realtor or your real estate professional, whatever they're calling themselves in your area, sit down with them, have a 15 to 30 minute meeting and go over everything that you want in your house. All your hopes, all your dreams, everything you've ever wanted, put it on a list so your realtor can take that and then start doing searches for homes that fit that criteria. Number four is making the offer. Now, this is where you're gonna to wanna to sit down with your agent and go over the points of your offer and what you're gonna be offering the seller. Now, you wanna make sure you're offering a strong offer just in case there is a bidding war. And that's a whole nother video that we can get into in the future. But what happens at this point is you and your agent will sit down, you'll write up the offer. That written offer will get submitted to the selling agent. Now, a few things can happen here at this point. One, the offer can get accepted which is great, and then we jump a few steps ahead, but we'll get there in a second. Two, they can flat out say, nope, we're not accepting your offer. Or three, what's very common is a counter offer. Now, number five is negotiations. This is actually one of my favorite steps, is negotiating with the other side of the table, the, the listing side or the seller's agent. And this is where you're gonna go back and forth, and each time you're negotiating, you're writing up a new contract because once they say no to that first contract and they counter offer, now that counter offer contract is the one that is on the table and that previous offer is now off the table. So at this point, as the buyer, you can accept their counter, you can say no, or you can counter their counter. And this is where things get kind of fun in the whole purchase process, at least for me anyways. And then once you guys accept the contract, then we move on to the next. Number six is escrow. And this could possibly be the most boring step out of all eight. And really all it does is means that the, the property is now put under deposit on the MLS. So it's no longer a viewable for anybody else. Nobody else can really come and see the property unless the other agent decides that maybe we want to back up offer because maybe your offer is not that strong. And then what happens is any deposit checks go into an escrow account and everything kind of sits there until closing time. Now the next step, is seven. And that's kind of like your final details. That's gonna be all your inspections and everything like that is kind of getting done at this point. And you're gonna have your homeowner's inspection, you're gonna have your title insurance being done, making sure there's no liens on the property, possibly more negotiations at this point if something should come up in the uh, inspection, like maybe the hot water heater is no good, it's not heating enough. Uh, that might be something that 
can then be either funds held in escrow in the previous step. So at closing, there's funds released to get that hot water heater fixed, or it could be negotiated to be fixed beforehand. Now, number eight is closing day. And this is the one that everybody really likes because you got the photo in front of the house with the just sold sign and you got your new keys and now you're gonna start moving in. And closing day is pretty simple. Um, as well, in Connecticut anyways, we use attorneys. Some states use title companies uh, to do the closings, but here in Connecticut, we use uh, real estate attorneys. So what happens is you go to one of the attorney's offices, all the paperwork will be there from the mortgage company. You sign your name a bunch of different places, initial a bunch of different things, and get the keys to your house. That morning of the day you're supposed to close in your home, you'll actually meet with your realtor and do one final walkthrough of the home to make sure it's what we call broom clean. So everything's swept up, it's, you know, there's no furniture left in there, there's nothing left in the garage, nothing in the basement, to make sure that the house is still in the condition that you agreed to purchase it in. In a nutshell, there's really eight steps to buying a home, and it really always starts with the first step, and that's finding an agent that you can trust, one that you're comfortable with, and one you don't mind seeing on a regular basis that doesn't have any annoying quirks that you may not like. Well, thanks for watching today's video. As always, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next.